All right, here we go. Hey guys, welcome to Launchpad Podcast. Before we get started, I want to thank everybody, all of our listeners who who listened to our New Year's episode so far, uh, <laughs> just put up with our caveman stand-up routine. Uh, I thought that was pretty funny, though. We could, we could. I thought it was, too. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's, nobody has written us being like, bye, <laughs> right? Like, we haven't gotten any bad things yet. Like, <laughs> <laughs> On the contrary, I, we've actually gotten some good feedback about our fart jokes and and caveman jokes. Uh, Everyone's like, I've been waiting for you guys for, to fart for three years. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it was just missing that little something. There was a zhuzh that this show did not have. <laughs> and it finally, a finally zhuzh, a zhuzh. <laughs> <laughs> The kind of highbrow humor we bring to the launch pad each and every week. We got some good stuff coming up, though. Every other week. Got some big announcements for the year. That'll be coming up. And uh, guys, we're doing a little YouTube component. So uh, this week, you can check us out on YouTube. You can see this episode as it was recorded raw so i don't know there might be some flubs in my brand new shirt <laughs> there might be some Rumi's hair looks cute today too. i know so, woo, woo, woo. could be some flubs could be some uh jokes that we had to cut from the edited version uh you know it, who knows it's wild we're live <laughs> the idea will be that you guys get to see us because i know that a lot of you especially the hot hot girl listeners are definitely like really interested in seeing what we look like um we have been told by people at cons that we have sexy voices. They didn't say sexy. I'm editorializing. <laughs> they said we have nice voices. I don't know that I've heard sexy. Yeah, everybody says um, we sound nice, like we're nice people. I don't. I, I don't even think they're like it's a. Oh, I took it to mean sexy. I, I don't even think they're like that's a nice voice. They're like, oh, you guys have kind, nice voices. No, there was a guy <laughs> once, and he said nice, mm. but he said like nice with three eyes, like nice. nice. He was kind of rubbing my hand while he said it, like his finger was stroking the, the back of my hand when he said it so i assumed it was sexual <laughs> i don't think that guy wanted to listen to the podcast Ruby. he was listening <laughs> <laughs> it was odd though because he told me that while stroking my hand but he was staring at you i mean he wanted he wanted a rocketeer sandwich that's all i can say all right uh well <laughs> Follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Launchpad Pod and our website, launchpadpod.com, and on our YouTube, the Launchpad Podcast. You guys can find us. I got this like one piece of hair that's like flinging all over the place. You said it was cute, but now it's. I like it. It's cute. Whoa. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like, I like it. Like a little alfalfa, like rocketeer fin sticking off the back of my head. A side. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> you got one on the other side, too. It's all, it looks cute. All right. It's balanced. All right. Thanks, Ruby. All right. Let's get on with the show. Fuck this. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Lift off. We have a lift off. All right, welcome to Launchpad Podcast. I'm Aaron. I'm uh, Matt. And Matt, when we got started today, when you hopped on the stream today, I was freaking out. You saw me like losing my shit, jumping. He was like dancing. Like you chair. guys know how Zoom, like you guys know how Zoom works. Like usually you connect to the video a half second before the audio. So I saw Rumi was like kind of singing and dancing and like pumping his fist in the air, and I had no idea what it was until my sound kicked in and I heard what he was saying. Uh, but we are, we are. I watched the Godzilla vs. Kong trailer, which literally dropped today. And I know you don't watch trailers, Rumi. You would avoid this like the plague, but I need you to see this. Well, I guess it's a good, a good time to make an exception because, you know, my rule is I'll watch a trailer if I see it on television, like a commercial, which never happens now, or if I see it in front of another movie at a movie theater, like how you normally would see trailers back in the day. But I guess that's definitely not going to happen, right? I'm not going to be in a movie theater in the next couple months. Right. So... Bring it on. All right. You can see it? Uh, yes, but it's small. Make it make it giant. My internet might fuck this up, by the way. All right. We're going to try it, though. Here we go. Oh, yeah. It's fucking it up. I can't see it. <laughs> it's not worth it. I should watch it on my end. Okay. The way that, the way that looks to me is um, it looks like it was about 17 different still frames. <laughs> 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 I mean, the music made it sound fucking epic, but the visual... Oh. It's What's the best site to go to? It's fucking cool. Just YouTube, buddy. Just YouTube. Just your regular YouTube. 
but I don't want to watch like fucking John's cut of this. No, 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 no. I I sent you the link in the chat. I sent you the link. See, if you are listening to the edited version, you don't hear any of this. And if you watch it, anybody watching on YouTube right now being like, this is ridiculous. These guys, this is this, this is dead air. Look at these guys. Oh man, it's so good though. Uh, we'll we'll do like a three, two, one, go. You know, classic sync up. How about that? Speaking of which, and this is like a side thing that again, you people watching the video are in the know. Rumi, I really want to watch the crawlers with you, like over, like like we did over the summer. Oh yeah, it it is so goddamn good. If we wait, watch is it this the TV. one that's like there was a body right here? You kids yes, are I, yanking my chain. Oh, maybe yep. the body was over there. No, it was right here. <laughs> And I already, I already bought it on Blu-ray. There's no, it's a, it's a, it's a Scream Factory. There's no features, like zero features. Of course, because it is nobody does features anymore. It's rare to get features. No, yeah, especially Scream Factory. Well, maybe Scream Factory, but most of the time people are just like, nah, you suckers will buy it, it is, anyway. It, it's one of those movies. It was so terribly bad fun. I cannot wait to watch it again. Okay, like I cannot wait. And it's funny because I was going to try to talk about it today. I can't, unless I, it's like the room, unless I can individually dissect every scene, it's not worth talking about why, like how great it is. You know what I mean? You get to like, the room's really funny because this guy Johnny doesn't really speak English well. Like you can't really like summarize how terrible it is. You know what I mean? You telling me it's, it's like, like a, the room is not bode well. No, you're going to like it better than the room because it's like a better bad movie. Yeah. But like. It's like you, like the opposite. You can't be like Citizen Kane is really good because of the light and shadow. <laughs> like you can't, you know, you <laughs> <laughs> Crawlers is a really good bad movie because the acting is not good. It's re- dude, it, but it's ridiculous. You kept sending me like here's how I know how excited you are about this movie. You kept sending me like little videos that you shot with your phone that's like Rumi this guy's trying to tell this sheriff that there's a dead body here and the sheriff's like you kids really get my goat he like cannot he, like he I, looks I like an alien smoking something in those woods. yeah he looks like an alien wearing a human suit so he's in disguise so you can't tell that he's an alien <laughs> but he has not learned how to talk human yet because the way he says lines like the words are not hard to say he's saying the words efficiently but there's like he doesn't understand the words he's saying and there's like a big bad who's like this big corporation guy because like part of this is about like radiation and dumping radiation of course there's a a big bad who's like this older looking guy clearly had never acted before like maybe he has but like he looks like someone there that was just so excited to be in the movie because he knew somebody he is one of those people that can't help but bop while he talks so every line he says, he's emphasizing with the majority of his body. That would be me. And I sent you, Rumi, I sent you a picture. <laughs> yeah, that would be you. I will say these I, words. I sent you a video of him on the phone, and it's a like a side profile of him talking, like at a medium shot. And he it looks like he's bouncing on a ball as he says the words. And that's how he talks the whole time. And later, I don't want to ruin it, but later he pulls a gun on somebody and does a whole scene like that with a gun in his hand. <laughs> And it's very suspenseful. So, uh, what, when, when did this come out? Uh, I forget the actual year. I want to say it's early 80s, though. Okay. Well, it might be late, late 70s, late 70s. Okay. Oh, it's great. So, it's great. So, it's great, that great. perfect age. Because, I don't know, it's, it's weird. There's, there is, like, a vintage that comes with this. Like, a shitty movie from the 90s isn't, just sure. isn't as good. It cannot be as good as a nice, vintage, shitty uh, you- 70s movie. Just so you know, you froze on my thing for a second. Don't worry here. about it. Like Don't for- bring it up. Just let it go. Just keep going. All right. Nothing happened, guys. It was regular. <laughs> hey, it's okay, guys. I'm still teaching Rumi how to, how to, how to, how to podcast. <laughs> We've been there doing it for vintage. three years. There is a vintage, though. You're right. And it's, it's funny because I think there's different eras that were good for different things, yeah. like whether it's good or bad or shitty, but like there's different types of shitty. You know what I mean? Like 90s was excessive action, excessive you know, girls, excessive, everything was excessive. Yeah. In the 70s and 80s, they were trying so damn earnestly. Like, e- this movie, at no point, like, the movie is about, when it gets there, it's killer vines, like, from trees killing people. And it, it first of all, it doesn't get there for a while. And when it gets there, it is 100% serious. And you know that they thought, like, this was the big scene where the first guy gets killed by vines and everyone's going to be, like, freaking out. It's like, no, man, everyone's going to be wetting their pants, like, at this point, because they're not even killing people. They're killing these, like, weird things that look like people, 
but I don't know where the production found these actors, but they were like <laughs> initiating scene 36, beep, boop, beep. <laughs> so how good. impressive would that be if it was pulling a Halloween three season, the witch level, like robot actors, like it's, <laughs> it's a mad scientist. And he's like, cause sometimes I think this is real. Like when you watch a movie, like, Hack, Hackoween or Halloween. There's like a, a, a Halloween killer movie with sat, sat, uh, Satanists killing people. Mm-hmm. And the acting is so terrible. And you look it up and they spent $5 million on this movie. And you're like, what? Sometimes Whoa. I think it's people who have so much fucking money and they're lonely. So they're like, I'll make a movie. But they don't want to like get real actors with the money. <laughs> so they just um, build robots and try and make them act. And that's the move. That's how we get some of these films. Like it's like it's <laughs> I thought you were going to say that some movies there are scenes cut out of that would have explained why everyone was <laughs> acting like a robot. I didn't think you meant that some productions are actually producing robots for the film. <laughs> yeah. For whatever reason. As actors. They think, as yeah, cast. They think that that's easier to do to get robots than it is to actually hire people to do things competently. They have the money. They just don't want to spend it. So they're spending the money on robots anyway. So I think that's what's happening. (laughs) And then they just throw them out into the street and they wander around Hollywood the rest of their robot lives. Just keep getting, they're like, Oh, you were in the crawlers. Yes. Yeah. And they're like, Hey, they're like driving an Uber and they're like, yes, I was in the crawlers. Now I drive this car. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they like they try to get a new job in the resume and they're like ah so i see you were in the crawlers okay and i see under skills you wrote speaking human can you explain that a little bit no and they're bouncing the whole time <laughs> you yeah, yeah. <laughs> you really get my goat uh, well do you have this pulled up room, room here are we gonna yes, watch yes, yes as a digression right, i now right. have it so the one I have on YouTube is the one that you sent me yep. and it is two minutes and 24 seconds that's long. it godzilla vs kong official trailer all right call ready it. Three, two, one, go. This is our oh, chance. damn. Are we talking through it? I don't know, man. So we got Kong, <gasps> freaking Kong, on the boat. They've already captured King Kong. And he's asleep. And Warner Brothers is all techno magic. I don't know why. <laughs> and, like, right off the bat, Kong. it's one of my favorite, the like tropes in any kaiju movies is the little girl or the little kid who somehow has a connection to the monsters oh i knew that they had a bond (laughs) she had nowhere to go so i made a i love in these movies they spend so much on king kong and godzilla they can't afford human stars so they just get randos yeah and little girls like we've seen these people before but not not in big things kong eats that girl oh (laughs) No, no. Like Homer, like Homer when he's King Kong. <laughs> They're friends. Oh. Check this out. Check this out. <gasps> Godzilla tearing ships up and stuff, dude. Like, oh. King Kong's like, oh no. Come and get me, bro. Yeah. Oh, that was a reveal. King Kong. Like leaning over the boat, and Godzilla comes up and just headbutts him. Yeah, I'm gonna take you with me. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Oh shit! They're fighting on top of an aircraft carrier. Boom. Wow. I hope this scene isn't even in the movie. <laughs> Oh, we're in a night city. Oh, Godzilla's fucking shit oh, good. This up. This guy's still in it. Something provoking him that we're not seeing here. I'm of the same opinion. The myths are real. Yeah. 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 I'm gonna take you with me. And they're the last ones standing. I can't reach it for great. Was he holding a weapon or a dead thing? It was a dead thing, I think. I think. Who bows to who? Nobody gonna stop the main. Kong bows to no one. Here we go. Oh, he does have a weapon of some sort. I think he has a bat. He has a weapon there. Yes, oh. he does. He's got a fucking axe. That's cool. That's cool. Come on. Come on, wow. Rumi. I don't, uh, I don't know the last time I had a boner based off a trailer. Well, you don't watch that trailers, one. so you don't get boners, Rumi. <laughs> yeah, I, my, my boner quotient is pretty low, considering. <laughs> Bonerless life. That was life. pretty cool. Oh, uh, so for those of you 
who are listening to the podcast audio only. Matt and I just watched the Godzilla versus King Kong trailer. I am through the roof excited about this, Rumi. What's your, what's your, your, your you said boner level excitement. Oh, I'm super excited because that looks exactly like what I want it to be. Right. So I loved all of the Godzilla movies so far. They were all pretty good. Yeah. I hated Kong, oh, what was it? Kong of Skull Island or whatever that hated? one was. Hated? Hated, really hated. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I didn't yeah. love it, but I enjoyed hated. it. I watched the first one. I think the um, I love the Peter Jackson. Kong yeah, we movie. both do. Yeah, you and I both love this movie. But that was that takes it in one way. I love the design of King Kong in, in King Kong versus Samuel Jackson, whatever that movie was called. Kong Skull Island. I love how he looked. This this design. I love that he's taller. He's he's more modeled like the the Kong from the the original movies from the 30s, which I love. I love that idea that they're not going traditional gorilla gorilla. But the rest of that movie was fucking stupid. It was terrible. I just there was so many things about it that I didn't like. I like that he eats the octopus. Other than that, like ugh, like it was hard for me to sit through in the movies in the movie theater. And then it was one of those movies that like later it was on HBO or something. I was like, you know what? I love King Kong, and I sometimes am quick to judge. Let me give it another try. And like fifteen minutes in, I was like, Ugh! <laughs> I couldn't make it. Through. My second, and it was like my second viewing. I couldn't make it through. I just fast forwarded uh, to the Kong parts, and even that was not that great. It, it did not bother me at all. It, I didn't love it. Like I'm not going to buy it, but I bought mm. Godzilla King of the Monsters. I bought the shit sure. out of that movie because that yeah. movie was cool. <laughs> Holy I shit! I don't blame you. And like, it's funny because all anybody when that movie came out, they're like, the stuff with the people was lame and the plot was stupid. And it's like. Have you ever seen You've a Godzilla, never saw a Godzilla movie? movie like, before. <laughs> like, oh my god, we just I just watched I just watched Godzilla versus Monster Zero, the one where the aliens come and borrow Godzilla and Rodan because that's love it. That's yeah, and the little eggs, and it's like they suck them up. Eh, like, come on, no Godzilla movie has like except maybe the first one has good human elements to it. Like, anytime there's people on screen, yippee, 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 stupid. The, at least Godzilla versus the Godzilla King of the Monsters, at least like Millie Bobby Brown had something to do that was involved with Godzilla. At least they were close yeah. to Godzilla. At least they were in danger most of the movie. It didn't ma- doesn't matter what words come out of their mouth. Doesn't matter what they're doing. As long as Godzilla is an approximate threat to them, I'm invested in the movie. They get like literally I could mute it and then mute, unmute it when I see Godzilla and I'm still happy with the movie. Sure. And that's that's what the regular Godzilla movie, you yeah. know, we did a whole dissection of that movie, right? We talked about Godzilla King of the Monsters. Yeah. If you guys haven't heard that episode, go check it out because obviously we've done a dissection funny, of we, every we Godzilla movie. It. We watched. Well, yeah. that's true. That's true. <laughs> From even like all the way back. The Toho yeah, one. We did way, a way whole back. thing on it with our friend Chris Canavo. Uh, it was wild, man. So looking at this already, I'm like, OK, there's a little girl who has like a an emotional tie to King Kong boring but uh, whatever what like you can't bring me down movie you can't But that will be if you think of kaiju movies like fa- even if you just think of Godzilla ones there's at least two or three kids who have had that thing right uh, it, it, At yeah. least this is not a new so, trope I mean Mothra has the two little Sakura twins like they're cool I mean <laughs> look they're cool yeah, it's <laughs> it's not a new thing I don't care the movie can't bring me down with like this little kid, like King Kong, because no. you know she's going to be in danger, and Kong's going to be all upset about it, and like whatever. Already, as long as the as long as the fighting and cool scenes yes. in that movie are the same level and intensity and coolness as the trailer, I don't expect it to be a fifty fifty split per se of of awesome Kong and Godzilla fighting and no. humans. But like, it's going to be sixty humans being like, oh no, problem, which is like yeah. fine because that's part of that's part of the deal. Yeah. But like. When you watch a, a an old Godzilla movie, right? Like let's say from the um the 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 Toho stuff. What was the first era? The Hisi era? Showa. Was that the first the Showa one? Showa era. Showa was yeah. the first one, yeah. The Showa era stuff, you had to suffer through a lot of blah blah blah. Oh my god. You know, yeah. I'm an artist, I'm a reporter, I'm a photographer, <laughs> I don't care. And then like you just sit through that whether you're fucking 5 or 25 or 35, you sit through that and then the monsters come and you're fucking happy and that's a good deal for you. And King yeah. of the Monsters the human stuff at the boringest was that level, but most of the time it was shitty movie Sunday. So it was like having a shitty movie Sunday plot with giant, awesome, badass monsters fighting and killing and doing. And things. to see so King like, Ghidorah make care. a return to the big screen and all that glory. Oh shit! Yeah, it was pretty cool. 
and just like, wish they'd made him sound like King Ghidorah. That's yeah, the whole all right. Well, but like on t- like already on this trailer, I'm like, there's a couple things that I'm like, really? Like they have a scene <laughs> where Godzilla rams through a battleship. Fucking bitching. Mm-hmm. That's cool. All right, I'm here for it. Two shots later, King Kong and Godzilla are punching each other standing on top of a battleship. Mm-hmm. That battleship cannot withstand their weight. That battleship would tip over the second anybody threw a punch. Like, you cannot stand on Godzilla has <laughs> hollow bones. Godzilla has hollow bones. He's got that. Watch, d- watch Jurassic Park. He's got Alex dad bone. bod, but hollow bones. <laughs> well, it's an interesting thing to think about what this is going to be like, and we can speculate because in, well, I guess, if anything, if you really think about it, the Godzilla movies make him out to be a protagonist, right? He's the hero in all of those. At no point is he evil. Who? In, in, in the newest Godzilla movies, right? Uh, I mean, he's fighting the monsters for the people. But he helps people. He's supposed to be a balancing force, and right. he's not killing people, right? In the first Godzilla movie, he was fighting the Mutos. He wasn't trying to kill people. He wasn't, he wasn't a, a force of nature unleashed. Any damage he did was um, collateral because he was trying to stop the Mutos, right? I guess. Plot-wise. I guess. So That's the one that I didn't like, enjoy that much. That one was just okay. Which, But if you think about it, like in the Showa era, yeah. sometimes Godzilla was bad. Yes. Like Godzilla versus Mothra, he was the bad guy. Mothra was the good guy. Yep. So in this new Godzilla, the new Gareth Edwards one, the, the, you know, the legendary Godzilla, he is good. The legendary King Kong, if anything, was the bad one, right? Like in, in Kong... Kong Island, whatever that movie was called. Kong Converse. Skull Island. It has cool words in it. How do you forget this title? Skull is cool. <laughs> Kong. Fast forward to the Kong part. Skull Island. He was the bad one, right? Because there was nothing in that movie where he was good. Yeah. Right? He tried to he tried to go up against the American military and nobody I know. fucks with us. USA. USA. But like many times in the Godzilla movies, you're supposed to relate to him, yeah. right? You're supposed to be have a bond with him. Mm. I don't think the King Kong movie was drafted that way at all. Which is weird because King Kong is usually, oh, it's the beauty Correct. that killed the beast. And you're, you like at first right. you're like scared of him and then you feel bad for him because he's just an animal and he didn't know any better. He's a nice guy. Go- right, nice which gorilla. is a trope in and of itself. Right, and they've right. used that for Godzilla a couple times throughout the years. But in this version, if anything, if you take the prior movies into account, the... Godzilla should be the one that we are already siding with. Now, back in the day when they did the original King Kong versus Godzilla, mm-hmm. American audiences were supposed to side with King Kong because not only was it a completely international fight where you had a Japanese monster fighting a, a, an American monster, but King Kong was this sympathetic figure, whereas, um, if anything, Godzilla was a thing to make us feel guilty, right? Like, as you're an American looking at Godzilla and you know the history of Godzilla, <laughs> you should be like, well, sorry. Hey, <laughs> like, remember when you dropped those bombs on us, you assholes? And you're like, ooh. <laughs> well, now we're going to fuck up your monkey, so. <laughs> but like in that movie, in the, in the original one, Godzilla is the bad guy. It's even played in the movie in the context of the film. Yeah. Godzilla is the bad one and King Kong is the one they're trying to use to stop Godzilla. So it'll be interesting to see what roles they're assigned in this. Now, you see Godzilla in a uh, King Kong in chains right away from here, and he, in the trailer, it shows he's got a bond with a little girl, so I'm thinking they're trying to make us sympathetic to him, and they don't do that at all in the trailer with Godzilla, which is pretty interesting, because so far, we've been very sympathetic with him, right? We've known him, we've, we've been on his side through most of these movies that he's been in thus far for Legendary. That's a very interesting point, because I didn't even, again... Didn't pay attention to the plots. You were just like, they punched each other <laughs> yep, yep. on a boat. <laughs> oh, man, they <laughs> fucked up the, the, the baseball diamond. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so like, uh, yeah, you're right. So here's my prediction is they bring Kong out of hiding. They kidnap him, basically. And Godzilla's mm-hmm. like, you know, you throw the apex predators in a ring together and see what happens. Um, so they pull him off of Skull Island. And then Godzilla's like, whoa, another monster? Mm-mm. You can't, you can't come into my house and expect to just be called king anything i'll show you i'll show you who wears the crown here uh you know what's a king to a god man fair now i you didn't see the extended trailer right where they show how they capture king kong no shut up stop it (laughs) they have a giant box and like the box is tilted up on a giant tree (laughs) and in the box is that little girl with that little king kong doll (laughs) (laughs) she's like how long do i have to and they're like shh 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 just and she's like, also holding 
a banana. And she slowly peels the banana. A single banana. And he comes out like this, like she's just waiting, waiting, waiting. And she just, the second she cracks the banana open, yeah. King Kong's like, huh? and he like sticks his head out. He's like, what? He's like, is that little Cindy Lou? <laughs> what do you got there, kiddo? <laughs> I was going to say she's holding a giant banana. And then I was going to say she's holding a ton of bananas. But I like the idea of her just holding one, one banana. regular banana. And he's like, whoa, <laughs> did you bring enough to share? <laughs> you gonna you gonna finish that? <laughs> well, I'm super excited. This comes out on March 26, like a couple days before my birthday. So my birthday party is gonna be a big old King Kong Godzilla battle. So, and you're all invited. The bummer for, the bummer for me though is gonna be like that is without a doubt a movie that should be seen in the. Theaters. I know, I know. And I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna risk it to go see that. Although. There were some theaters, I don't know if they're still doing, but there were some theaters that for like a hundred or two bucks, you could rent out the whole theater. I, I would. So if like me and 10 friends got together, and we all wore masks that. and sat in separate corners. Well, luckily, I also know some people who have some pretty decent screening rooms around here. So mm. I might be able to swing something like that. Like see it, see it on a big screen. Are you inviting me to go down to Georgia? Yeah, if you want to. Okay. You can come down. I mean. Just for the screen? Yeah, just for the screening though. Right now, I'm picturing you in a giant box held up by a giant tree <laughs> with a banana and like a copy of the movie, and you open the shrink wrap. <laughs> <laughs> what you got there, Ruby? You got Godzilla vs. King Kong? I mean, it's going to be on HBO Max the same day, so. The only thing is, I feel like that's a movie, like, why would you watch that on my TV? And I have like a, like I have a 50-inch TV screen, which is great, but like, I feel like, ugh, that's undercutting the punch so hard i haven't cared about going to movies in a long time because every time i go i have a bad experience in one way or another the like i saw wonder woman in a really good experience and and it made the movie better it was it was good to watch um Mm -hmm. i saw godzilla king of the monsters and that was a really good big screen experience but most of the time when i go to a movie there's somebody in the theater who's like hey hey can i have your seat you were here a half hour early but i want your seat let me like move move over <laughs> and I, I want to fight them. Um, you, I pay money to go to the, to the theater that's supposed to not let people in when the movie starts, but they're just like, yeah, go in. And they let people in. I, fuck you. I hate that. I hate that. They were like, the people at the movie theater are like, it's cool. Go, you can go take a seat even though you're late. I'm sure no one will podcast bitch. Yeah, about this exactly. Later. I mean, well, and of course they want to sit right in front of you or come in and be like, Hey, can I sit in that seat? I want your seat every fucking time. And it's like that, you know, that's why I like going to the arc because you have the assigned seats, but it's like they still let people in late. They still like, ugh, I don't know. I, I, I hate it. The parking situation fucking sucks. The crowds suck. There's always somebody talking. You know who you sound like? Every sound. So- Waldorf and Statler. I know. That's how Waldorf and Statler are before they go in to see the Muppet Show. Uh, they have the same fucking complaints they have the same, every time. Every time there's a person who takes a call. Hello. Hi. I'm in a movie. Yeah, yeah. Shh, I'm in a movie. And it's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I I Look, I don't go to movies to want to kill somebody. I want to go watch a movie. So me watching a movie at home just seems like a better bet to me because then I only have one person to be mad at and I can't stay mad at it. That I long. get that feeling. It doesn't, it, I, get, <laughs> I get that feeling, but I, for a movie like this, like, you know, for Mission Impossible movies, for uh, Fast and the Furious movies, sure. those I feel like you got to try to see them in the theater. For even a horror movie, I don't mind watching at home as much as I would, uh, we don't want to see it in the theater. Yeah, it's tough because, like, you know, I really would have liked to see a movie like Tenet, even though a lot of people were like, waste of time, but whatever. I like, I like time travel Christopher Nolan weirdness, so I would have liked mm. to have seen that in on the big screen. Yeah. Stuff like that. And I, I do miss a big screen experience, but I need to go when nobody else is going to be there, especially somebody who's going to come in and ask for my seat. Oh, kill. That's never happened to me at all. Unless I'm in arc light and I'm either accidentally or unpurposely snuck a seat or two over. But also, I'm the one who'll go to like crank two and start like high fiving people because it's yeah, getting so awesome. We were in the, I remember that. I think we were in the last row for that. Yeah. But otherwise, whoever was behind us would have been like, oh. There were a lot of people there, though, who were not having that movie and they were leaving. So I, I felt like I, I love that movie yeah. and I was as happy. I, like, I don't get so excited about a movie like that to high five you. But the fact that you did, I was totally on board. And I believe we were at that movie with Barry, our friend Barry, who hates everything. Hates everything. Except people, and accepting that everyone but else hates. Like, he is, just saw Cats, and he was like, Cats is fine. But he could, like, his opinion of you diminished when you did that high five. Um, he, he thought less of you for doing that. And I don't think it was because of the movie. I think it was because you were high-fiving about a movie. 
He was like, oh. A movie that he didn't like. Because it was right in the moment in Crank yeah. 2 when the movie was like, <laughs> turned him into a giant kaiju smashing shit. And I was like, this movie does not give a fuck what you think. And I love that. But here's the thing. I'm so afraid that you're going to go see, because I think you, you, get, you, you get easily influenced by Barry's negativity when you go see a movie. You come out of a movie and you're like, that sucked. And it's so. like, what? And it's only if he's there. It's like, you're going to go see Godzilla vs. King Kong see, with Barry. He likes things and I hate them. And he gets on <sighs> me like he loved Captain Marvel. And I was like, that movie was terrible. He's like, why? But you he just said he Avengers. liked cats. I agree. But he likes dumb shit. I agree. Captain Marvel was not good. And you don't Avengers like good things. Good. So, man, I don't know. I'm worried. I'm worried because this trailer like was so crawlers. cool. <laughs> <laughs> again we've said this it's easier to like a shitty movie because you have zero investment i didn't pay 14 dollars and try to park here to listen to a guy on a cell phone to watch this piece of shit and feel like i got ripped off but when i'm at home and i'm like i got an hour and then you put this shitty movie on it makes you crack up so hard you pee your pants <laughs> I, it's a win-win it's when hard to last lose time this is the second time we've sprung up peeing in our pants in this episode when was the last time you peed your pants is it I like I can't remember. It's been a long time, but I've shit myself sooner than that. <laughs> <laughs> this joke brought to you by Launchpad 2021. Remember, this is the year that we started by specifically saying we were going to try to bring it extra hard and needed extra time to craft better episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I can genuinely say the same. Though. I'm trying to think of the last time I peed in my pants and I can't uh, like I must have been a kid. I can't like not even I don't even mean like a little bit from laughing a little bit. Yeah, it's been a fucking I, I can't tell you, but I can tell you last time I got like food poisoning and was like, oh, better run to yeah. the bathroom and did not make yeah. it. Just not running enough. Did, did not run fast <laughs> enough. But like sometimes I feel oh boy, guys. Hey, <laughs> if y'all want to hear a whole bunch of stories about me shitting my pants, Rumi, did I ever tell you about the time I shit my pants on America's number one comedy set? <laughs> I think, yeah, I think you did. It was recent. It was in the last 10 years. Or yeah. So, right? Oh yeah. I was, I was on the set of uh, uh, Modern <laughs> Family. I was, a, I was day playing as a VFX on set supervisor. Basically they were just like, Hey, we need some help for a day. Can you come in and do this? I was like, fuck yeah, I'll come. So I showed up and I wasn't feeling well, like right off the bat, my stomach was hurting and I get there, I walk onto the set and immediately it was just like, oh, oh, <laughs> and you can't leave. So just went to the bathroom, Chuck and dealt with it. Fucking sucks, dude. <laughs> Fucking sucks. <laughs> so then you have to pretend to be a professional worried that people think you smell like shit. <laughs> 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 right now there's like there's got to be at least one person who worked on that show listening to our show yeah. and they're like that was him yeah i i was there that day i smelt that oh my god <laughs> oh my i mean gross but look if you can't be honest with yourself that literally shit happens and you have to deal with it in your life and i i, I don't tell that story but i bring up an analogy where it's like look Learning how to handle this kind of situation is what separates people from... It's, it's called a situation. A situ yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> when you learn how to handle that stuff and just deal with it, like that's what tells me that you can get shit done because there's so... <laughs> too many... <laughs> <laughs> Literally. No, but like, how many times have you assigned a task to a group of people, for, in your case, probably children... And you come back and you're like, how far have you gotten? Like 0%. You're like, why? And they're like, oh, we, we came across this one stumbling block and we, we don't know what to do. And it's like, sure. did you try any solutions? Nope. We just sat here with twiddling our thumbs. And it's like every single person listening to this podcast has gotten shit on their hands, literally. Pooped their pants and gotten shit on their hands. Something has happened. <laughs> you didn't call for help. You figured it the fuck out yourself. <laughs> You didn't call anybody and go... Is that the true equalizer then of like life is to try to figure shit out? It's like literally have shit on your hands? I, I think it's a good analogy because it's one of those things that's so fucking embarrassing that people just don't ask for help. They figure out how to solve the situation so that nobody finds out. That's what you need you to do what? in life. You're right. Because the worst time that ever happened to me was as a kid and we were like out. I'm not going to give you like gross details, but like we were out. And we had eaten at a restaurant and then went to the store next door and I needed to go to the bathroom. I knew it was going to be a problem. 
and I didn't make it in time. But when I got to the restaurant's bathroom and like saw that there was a huge mess, as a kid, I figured it out. And then I told my mom afterwards what I had, like when it came out, I was like, oh, that was bad. And this is what I, I chucked my underwear and stuff. But like as a kid, I didn't come out and be like, hey, mom, <laughs> I need your help in here yeah, yeah. in the middle of a restaurant. It, it is one of those things that makes you figure out solutions so goddamn fast. You, you, like, you can't believe what MacGyver shit you've come up with to solve that kind of problem. Stop saying shit as a synonym <laughs> for other words in this conversation. <laughs> you will not believe the kind of MacGyver solutions you come up with to solve these situations. Because I, I kid you not, like I don't know how many times I've seen this happen where somebody has been assigned a task and you come back an hour later and they're like, hey, we just gave up and we've been sitting here doing nothing. And you're like, yeah. you need to be trying everything. And if I come back and there's zero progress, at least have solutions to offer. And right, right. Uh, you know, hey, maybe they just didn't shit their pants enough. You know what? <laughs> so you think it's like the greatest like brown mot- mo- motivator, right? Yeah. Like, to just like get people. So if I then take that one step further, there should be more like trainings about shit in your pants, right? <laughs> Where it's like, fuck going to a ropes course. It's like, all right, everybody eat these nachos as fast as you can. Also, <laughs> there's no bathroom. You guys Go. may see in front of you a delicious spread. We have. We have Chang's, we have Chipotle, <laughs> we have Taco Bell. <laughs> you may think- th- And all the black coffee you can drink. You may think those are Andy's mints. They're not. Be careful with those. They're laxatives. <laughs> Chocolax. <laughs> this team building now, now do the fucking ropes course. <laughs> now do the. Now let's see you do a trust fall. <laughs> Figure it out, bitches. <laughs> you know, we have the most productive quarter. Yeah, I think it had something to do about the training. Andy, we swore we would never talk about that again. <laughs> Oh my god. It's like I know what you did last summer, but instead of hitting a guy with your car <laughs> You had to do a ropes course with a full load. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Whoever was belaying the rope on that was holding tight for sure. <clears throat> oh my god. I'm glad that I pulled up all this information on the movies I've watched recently to discuss because <laughs> now we're doing this. <laughs> Wouldn't that be hilarious if suddenly my career takes a complete left turn now i'm like a motivational speaker and i do like giant corporate retreats (laughs) that's all i do (laughs) nobody talks about it it's like nobody talks about fight club but it's like oh man you got to get mclean to come do your uh, corporate retreat motivation what would you call yourself motivation motivation (laughs) get shit we help you get shit done There's a, there's a, uh, it must be a local plumber nearby (laughs) that calls himself the ninja plumber and he's got a van and it's, you know, wrapped with the, 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 the advertisement for his, and it says ninja, (laughs) ninja plumber. And it's pretty cool because it's like a plumber with a ninja costume and everything. And on the back, uh, the back doors of the van, it says we get shit done and shit, you know, has asterisks in it. But I was like, oh no, it says shit's about to go down is what it said. And I was like, awesome. That's great. That's, I would call that guy. I, I'm going to laugh really hard if like anybody, any one of my supervisors is listening to this and they're like, <laughs> have you ever shit yourself? At Has that ever happened here? This office? <laughs> You're like, remember that really productive week I had? <laughs> <laughs> I had the flu that week, but I got, I was getting things done. <laughs> Every Monday, I just, you know, early in the morning, just get it out of the way. And the rest of the oh week, I'm God. <laughs> flying high. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit man what's our podcast about normally again <laughs> movies and toys and stuff <laughs> uh, I do have a movie smooth transition <laughs> okay smooth transition I did watch a movie I got to sit down and watch a movie this week the baby took a nap or went to All bed right. I watched his house this is a 2020 horror film Have you heard this movie, His House? No. All right. It's awesome. So it is about two Sudanese refugees who come to England and they're assigned to this like shitty refugee house. They're, they're you know, given this house as a refugee status. 
Um, it stars uh, uh, Wonmi Mosaku and Sope Derisu and Matt Smith, who was the 11th Doctor Who. <laughs> if you recognize those okay. names. I can't see your face, Rumi. Tilt that camera up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so, uh, Wonmi Mosaku was in um, Lovecraft Country. She was the sister in Lovecraft Country. Really well acted, but it's about these two refugees and their daughter's dead. She apparently drowned on a boat ride over trying to get there. And when they get to this house, like it's falling apart, but they start hearing voices in the walls and scary shit starts happening. And it's one of those movies that does such a good job of taking the character's guilt and their own personal fears, their internal fears, and making them an external monster in the movie. And Mm. I love it when movies do this well. I think some of the best horror does this well. But this movie is so freaky. There's a lot of really good like moments where like, you know, you turn the light off and you can see something in the room, but you turn the light on and it's gone, but you can hear it getting closer mm. to you. And then the light goes off and boom, it's in your face. A lot of creepy things sneaking in shadows. Um, he keeps smashing holes in the wall with his hammer. And then like later, like things will be peeking through the hole, like in the background, like you'll just see him talking. Something will be back there and you're like, no, 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 no. Oh, so creepy. That's some of my favorite things in horror when it's like the understated thing because i feel like when you watch a horror movie a lot of times you're like wouldn't it be creepy if something looked through that hole yep and it doesn't, doesn't usually or wouldn't it be creepy if you saw something in the background and you, it doesn't always do it unless it's like you know a scene that's set up for that but when it's in the background like that subtly i think that's it, some of the creepiest shit they do a great job with that that kind of thing there's a lot of great like sort of dichotomy scenes where he's like we need to assimilate or we're not going to be accepted in this country and she's like we need to be true to who we are and so she's eating food with bread in her hands and he's like let's try with utensils and there's a scene where he's using utensils and she's using her hands and bread and and it just shows how separated they've become and they both agree that they hear the voices and have seen things and fucked up stuff with this witch in this house and he's like well you know aren't you scared and she's like i've seen the horrors of what men can do you think i'm afraid of ghosts which is so cool because you get glimpses that these people have seen their whole like villages massacred when they were in this Sudanese civil war and you know, in South Sudan and, and now they're here and they're dealing with the loss of their daughter. They're dealing with this, like being in a place that doesn't really accept them and being haunted by this witch doctor ghost. And it is, it is really cool, really well done. And, and honestly, one of the best I've seen in a long time. And I think you'd like it better than say, I don't know, Hereditary or The Witch, some of the ones that have been touted, or even Midsummer that have been touted as mm. great horror movies. I think this one moves better and is not trying to be as like artsy. And it, yeah. it definitely it definitely has a nice clip to it and it drives you through good horror pieces. Where'd you see it? It's on Netflix. What was it called again? Our house? His house. It's a very, very, very fine house. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. His house. Okay. Did you say it <clears throat> was it Sudanese or was it American? It's it's British. It's like BBC films helped make it. But the two Is it in English? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. But it, it goes back and forth because the the, the refugees speak uh, I think it's called Daku is the language that they, they sometimes speak. But it has subtitles when they speak that, but they jump back and forth because they use English a lot because they're trying to assimilate and like a lot of the conversations are in English. It's not hard to follow. They do a good job with Oh, because I was going to say, I couldn't see you loving a movie so much if you had to read the whole thing. I love subtitle films. I love foreign films. <laughs> I, I, some of my favorite films are, are foreign films. Really? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I have no problem with subtitles. I don't have a problem with it unless it's a film that's supposed to be visually striking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because then it's hard to, to, to split between watching, watch, like watching, like you said, subtle things in the background stuff and reading. And I feel like there's nuances... In 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 body language and posture and facial expressions that you might miss if you're reading subtitles. Not that I don't read subtitles; I have no problem doing that. But I, I will sometimes if it's a good movie, I'll do both. I'll I'll read it first and then I'll I'll watch it again dubbed. Yeah. So that I could pick up nuances visually that I missed in the in the visuals. I will be honest; I've had subtitles on whether it's in English or a different language for years. You mean just like when you watch a random movie? Yeah, I, I have subtitles really? on quite a bit because. I don't know if I have bad ears, but I like to crank my TV up to hear shit. 
and my wife does mm. not, so I just have to have subtitles on or I can't understand. It's another Statler and Waldorf thing. I can't understand what people say. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't like when people talk during the movies. When I sit home, I turn my TV all the way down <laughs> and I make the little words go on the bottom. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe it's wearing headphones for years. I, I don't know what it is. I just can't, I can't hear people You're that like, well. You're sitting on the couch with your subtitles on. Down in front. And Kate's like, honey, that's you. <laughs> down in front, I said. <laughs> sit down. Um, but yeah, so I have no problems. I mean, some yeah, some of my favorite films are are foreign films. Like Thirteen Zemetti is a French film, really good, and Handmaiden, and I mean, Old Boy. I love that stuff, man. Look at this guy. Ooh, this is cultured. We get cultured here. Oh, we, this is the same guy who fourteen minutes ago was describing an incident in which he shat <laughs> his pants. <laughs> and I tell that story with pride because it made me a stronger man. <laughs> <laughs> Just one that can't hear. I need something. Yeah, I saw the devil. Fucking great. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of great movies. I mean, oh, I thought you saw the devil was related to the pants. Shit. <laughs> I was like, wait, <laughs> he was involved. <laughs> but like, but I wanted to bring this up because I love movies that, like I mentioned, take an internal guilt and an internal strife and make an external monster out of it. I wanted to pose to you: Can you think of other movies that have done that well? Well, it's funny when you said that. I didn't want to. I didn't want to stop your flow. But when you said that. Were you speaking literally where in the context of the film, their strife becomes an actual monster? Or are you talking about metaphorically what they're going through is also represented as a monster? Those, once again, you've you know just I mean? said the same thing twice to me. No, no, it's two different things. It means there are some movies like, um, like for example, um, Babadook. Yes. Babadook, that monster is literally in the movie born of their strife and their upset and their fear. That's exactly the one that I was thinking of, too. Um, wh wh but which one is that? Because you, you, it sounded to me that like... That one is true. That one's literal. That okay. is literally their, like what they're experiencing and the things that they're afraid of literally, actually, 100% are really turning into that monster. What's a figurative movie? Whereas, like, we're like, um, um, for example, Jaws... This is not the best example, but it's the best one I can come up with off the top of my head. Brody is afraid of the water, so it's man versus nature. That shark embodies nature. It embodies his fear of the water. So it's not actually his fear. It's not literally the thing. He did not cause it to be there, but that is a monster that is there, and it's supposed to represent in part at least, his fear of the water, his right. fear of being able to protect his fear. Well, it sounds like the second one, the one that is not literally a monster... Gotcha. Okay. Is is <clears throat> not a horror movie, and this movie is very much a horror movie. And these these mm, okay. these creatures are very real. But my wife made the argument that what if they weren't? We have n nobody else has any interaction with these monsters. It could be their shared hallucinations. Oh, that's pretty cool. But there's literally monsters that attack them and and hurt them, and and they're fighting literal creatures. So. In my head, they're real. It's a literal monster, but I could, you could argue that if you pull that that's out, cool though. You know, if you pull them out of the the creatures out of the movie, you still have a, a horror movie. That's pretty cool. I like the idea of that. It definitely leaves you something to think about, which I like. Um, the Babadook was one that I was thinking, like The Exorcist, to an extent, is the mother's fear of thing of bad things happening to her child, her family falling apart. You know, the husband not being present or in in Reagan's life then manifest into this real horror. Mm. Um, Rosemary's baby, the fear of having a child, the fear of childcare, the paranoia of not trusting people around your child. That one almost doesn't manifest. They just is a cult of Satan worshipers and she is having the devil's baby. But again, it's using internal fears and then confirming them with external realities that are horror. Mm. Which I love. I love it when movies do this well. Yeah, I guess do, doing it well is the key, right? Not a, not a lot of movies do it well. A lot of movies attempt it. But I think like the best kinds of horror are the ones that use real fears. Um, and, and at least ones that we can relate to, you know? And something like this movie, his, his house was pretty good at making you go, man, being a refugee from a country where you've literally seen people slaughtered with machetes and machine guns and you come here and people treat you like shit when you're the one who needs help and they're like hey we'll help you but here's this shitty house and here's like 75 dollars a week pounds i guess you know british but 
<laughs> you know, and then everybody around you is like, you fucking refugees, and they're treating them like shit. And it's like, man, mm-hmm. it's hard enough to be assimilate into a place that doesn't really want you when you're also dealing with all this guilt of escaping this country and literally being chased by ghosts at this point. Raise your hand, listeners, raise your hand if you thought this was this episode was going to get this deep after how we digressed earlier. <laughs> hey, that's why we're so fucking awesome, Rumi. We can start. It's true. We can start it's with one like, of the reasons. <laughs> can poop your pants and recover like pros. Let you, let, yeah, let me I'll make a list of how awesome we are. Number 2. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good movie if it's on netflix and it's accessible and watch I've, yeah. I've purposely been trying to watch more movies lately i actually have a bunch on my list to talk about today too i think i'm just going to hit you with one though because we have taken such a fun and interesting turn on this episode um the ones i was i have a couple here i want to save the crawlers like i would love to watch it with you and then actually do an episode on it because i think there's plenty there to talk about and plenty of scenes to explain but uh I watched a couple of movies that I was excited to watch, watched and were like, meh, so I'm not even going to do those. But I watched, <clears throat> I think a couple of weeks ago, I told you guys I had gotten the Criterion collection of Bruce Lee movies, which yes. just is getting better and better. I think it's five or six, I think it's five movies. And I just watched the third one, which was 1972's The Way of the Dragon. This is the one where he fights Chuck Norris. Yes. And I am pretty sure I have never seen this one before. Watching it the other night, I was like, the other two that I've seen, one was called Fist of Fury, which is also known as the Chinese Connection, and the other one, um, the other one was called Big Boss, and that those two I had seen before, and they kind of run together and jumbled together. This one was so silly for a while, but once the fighting started, it was like fucking A. Now, in this one, Bruce Lee actually wrote, directed, and starred it in Hong Kong, and it's fucking awesome. Great. I mean, it's got two great fights at the end. It's got great fights throughout. Nunchuck fights, bow staff fights. He is just so fucking incredible to watch. And then you get to the end and you realize he made it. Now, I'm a special features guy, so I'm watching special features about it after the fact. He was a perfectionist. He, and then the more you know about Bruce Lee, it's like just, he just seems like what an incredible guy, what an incredible artist, let alone martial artist. He, um, made this movie, right? And he thought this was going to be the thing that made Hollywood notice him. And when he saw it, when it finally came together, he watched it and he was like, you know what? This isn't good enough. He didn't want Hollywood to see it because it wasn't worthy. He wasn't, it wasn't what he wanted it to be. Whether he owned the actual rights or not, whoever he was working with did sell it for, you know, to America for, for, for American screenings. And Bruce Lee was pissed because he was like, no, that's not my good, my, that's not good enough. That's not my best. I want it to be what it is before they see. Because his whole goal was to make it big in Hollywood and he wanted to be, you know, in charge of everything. Yeah. So this is the first time he was able to write, direct, and star in something. And it's weird. It starts off really silly, like almost like Jerry Lewis, who was one of his inspirations. Because he goes and visits, like, is it his cousin or like relatives who yeah, own a uh, restaurant, yeah. right? And and the restaurant's yeah. being menaced by and gangsters. They're in Rome. Yeah. Yes. And it's really weird. There's like, so, you know, it's, it's, it's really the same plot as the last two movies where like someone he knows, family or friends are having a problem with local thugs. He goes in to try to help and it eventually, it eventually ends up being punched in the face help, you know, but he makes these little fucking wooden throwing darts and he's throwing them at guys who are holding guns on him. And he just, it's the same Bruce Lee badass doesn't give a shit. And there's a couple times where he's practicing with other martial artists and they are learning from him in the movie. And when you watch these guys throw a kick, you're like, wow, that was a really good kick. Then Bruce Lee shows them a kick and you're like, I can't believe that he is of the same species as those guys. He moves so goddamn fast. It literally, it just, it looks fake. And when you watch him fight, uh, I, and again, I watch a lot of stuff about this specific movie, he hired, and when you watch the credit sequence in the in the beginning, it it, it gives you these guys' as titles. He hired a lot of different award-winning martial artists to be in this movie to fight against him because he wanted that shit to look real. So they are really hitting each other and doing shit. It's not full speed or anything, but or full contact, but they are really doing their shit. When you watch, there's this guy, a big guy, who, who he was in Fist of Fury as well. He's got a big cut across his face, like a big scar. I forget his name, but he's tall. He's big. He can fucking move, and he would wipe my ass. Like, he would wipe the floor with my ass nonstop. 
when he fights Bruce Lee, it's like the equivalent of like me fighting a kid. You're like, you you have nothing. You can't do shit. Yeah. He is just so goddamn fast. And he's like a viper. He just strikes and strikes and strikes. And he's just so fast. It's ridiculous. It's like awe-inspiring. Yeah. Those, these movies are great. They're so classic. We've actually gotten several people have been like, I want to do an episode with the Launchpad Podcast talking about Bruce Lee. Um, George, our buddy George. Uh, from oh, yeah. Beaver Rodeo, he was he said he was interested in talking Bruce Lee, and I'd be down. I'd be down because we could do a whole episode about Bruce Lee movies because this guy was a legend easily. There's not we could do that one many. about him. Yeah. We could do one episode about any one of his movies. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, we got the next in that collection is Way of the as uh, Enter the Dragon, which is and probably I've his most well a, known. Sure, because it was an American movie, and I've seen that one multiple times. Yeah. But it'll be interesting to see it again. I haven't seen it in a while. And then the next one in that that is Game of Death, which is the one that he died halfway through. So there's a lot of <laughs> that one. Ha- but you know. but I will say, Game of Death has some of the best fight scenes for a movie mm-hmm. that really is. I I don't know. That one is not a great movie to me, but it has correct. It has one of his most iconic fight scenes and his right. most iconic costume with the the sure. yellow jumpsuit with the black stripe. The Power Ranger. Yeah, costume. the Power Ranger yeah. costume. Yeah. Well, he's just you know it's it's um. I can't even think of another person to compare him to. It's almost like, I hate to make it sexual, but it's almost like if you could think of whoever your definition of like a sexy bombshell is, like who commands your full attention when she walks on screen because of how hot she is. He's like that just in like how fucking gnarly he moves. Like he's, he, he's a decent enough actor. He plays that part well and he seems funny. He seems smart. He seems deadly when he's trying to be like hardcore in there. But when he starts fighting, he's just like, he knows he's going to win. He's cocksure. He's going to win. And he's just a bad ass. And he's so, he looks deadly. He just looks fucking deadly. And I always, I always, I always compare him to like a coiled spring. His body just always looks like a coiled spring ready to just like snap out. And you like, you can't even see it. And it's like. Him throwing punches compared to other people in this movie throwing punches is is amazing. Yeah, he, he strikes like a cobra, man. It's wild. It's ridiculous. Rumi it's has a little ridiculous. man crush on Bruce Lee. I'm not like. going to lie. I do. I'm, and I'm, I know Ryan Reynolds, you're listening right now. So jealous. Pretty yeah. jealous. Yeah. But <laughs> he's just, I, he, it's so amazing to watch. And it's one of those things that like, I thought about looking up like training videos of his just to see if there's, there's video of him training. Cause just watching him do it. And actually in this movie, it's interesting. There's a couple times where like for 30, 40 seconds, he'll look in a mirror or it's right before a fight he'll kind of warm up and you get to watch him like stretch and warm up a little bit. And even that is interesting before the fight where he fights Chuck Norris, there's a whole thing where they both take their shirts off. They both put their backs to each other about like, you know, 20 yards apart and they're stretching and they're kicking and they're punching, just kind of loosening up. And you never see that in a fight scene. And I would want to be like, time out, time out. I got to stretch. <laughs> It's so goddamn cool. <laughs> Ruby's doing some stretches. Oh, Check did you hear out. my knees YouTube, pop? Ruby's oh, no. This is going to be bad. <laughs> he does it. He's, he goes like this uh, and his yeah. lats. Yeah. He looks like Spider-Man's webs in his armpit Dude. because he's just got this like, He's got lats. Triangle. Oh, yeah. He's got lats for days. That guy's, yeah, probably one of the most muscular people to ever be in movies. Ridiculous. It's just so, in, and it's cool because he's not like a Schwarzenegger or a Stallone muscular. Yeah. You know, he's got like he's not a big guy. body frame. Yeah, he, no, he's small, he's but tiny. it's just muscles on it's just top of muscles. It doesn't even look that muscular, but you know that it's just nonstop, you know. I do have a man crush, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, he'll kill you with his pinky finger. Watch that finger. movie and tell me you don't. You I, I, he'll kill you with his pinky finger. He doesn't give a fuck. I, I love that movie. I love that like I said, it's the, the fight scene in the Coliseum where he <laughs> rips off Chuck Norris's chest hair. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And all the kittens are watching and they're like, meow, awesome. <laughs> it's very funny. It's, it, is, it is a good movie to watch in terms of that because he tries to do these comic moments that they don't fail, but they're out of place because tonally it doesn't make sense. The movie opens that way, very silly. Then it gets into like normal drama. Then shit gets real. And, like, he ends up fighting. When he fights Chuck Norris, he kills Chuck Norris. But he kills him sadly. Like, as he kills him, you could see in his face it pains him to do so. And then he carefully covers Chuck Norris's body as, like, a sign of respect. Even though he literally has never seen Chuck Norris until that fight scene. They have not seen each other before that. They have not had any interaction the whole movie. He doesn't know who the fuck this guy is. But this guy is sent to kill him, so he kills him He'd back. never seen Walker, Texas Ranger? <laughs> 
Jeez. It's awesome. It's it's such a good... It, it's definitely... I hadn't seen it. I'd, well, I think I'd seen the Chuck Norris fight scene before, but out of context. He was doing... It's now my favorite. He was doing what like the Expendables was doing back in the day, but with like actual martial artists. Like Chuck Norris, yes, he's a silly action movie guy, but he is a... Was like a, an award-winning martial artist. Mm-hmm. You know, he... he he wasn't a joke at the time. He was a legitimate martial artist who had won a bunch of awards and been winning competitions and whatnot. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of people like that. And but he was bringing them into his movies to show off what they could do. And he wanted like specimens of humanity to show. You know, his fight with Kareem Abdul Jabbar. He wanted the tallest guy he could possibly find to be in the movie, yeah. so he could fight him and show off like what that would look like. And that's cool. That's fun. That's that's badass. Fucking ridiculous. And he, it's cool when you think about it. He had a very interesting, um, his fight, fighting style was called Jean Couteau. Yeah. That's true. Something like that. His, the one that he invented. Yeah. It was, yeah, I was right. Jeet, Jeet Kune Do. Uh huh. And his, it was basically a mix of every fighting style that you were comfortable with. And he didn't think that you should be one fighting style. He said you should make an amalgamation of what works for you. And to him, if you were in a fight, you had to win the fight. It didn't matter what, which is cool because when you watch his movies in uh, the last one, which was Fist of Fury or Chinese Connection, he throws dirt in a guy's eye at once, which is usually frowned upon in a fight. But he was like, no, this guy's trying to kill me and I want to win this fight. In this movie, he punches a guy in the balls. He rips off Chuck Norris's Chuck hair, uh, chest hair. And it's like, if you're in a fight, you fight to win. And like that makes sense. Like if I was in a bar fight, I'd always be like in my head, I'm like, well, I wouldn't punch a guy in the balls. But like, presumably, if I'm in a bar fight, it's not because I started it. Some dildo starts it and I'm gonna punch his balls. Like he deserves to get his ball punched well, if you start a I fight think it depends on how like you escalate according to the to you know what's happening. That's, you like, don't open you don't open with a ball punch. No, I well I'm saying like <laughs> you try and keep it fair, but like if he's there to kill you. If if like if like it's ball escalated punch. to the yeah ball punch sure totally like if if it's turned into like he's gonna kill me then I, you know I'll bite his face off I don't care you know you get you got sure. it I think yeah I guess that makes sense you got to respond in kind but like if somebody's like hey I'm mad at you at a bar fight I mean I am fighting to back away to get out of the situation like hopefully I don't have to throw a punch hopefully you just shove him away and people grab him and it's over but like you you. You know, nope. He, I'm taking out nunchucks right then. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Like, hey, whoa, whoa. Excuse my friend Matt. Rumi has been watching too many kung fu movies. It's a little too much, Bruce like, Lee. That, that fucker just watched Fist of Fury, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we no, can he watched tell. Way of the Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get too close. Rip he off will... chest hair left and yeah. right. <laughs> Rip off your chest hair. Uh, I might button that up. I might get that all the way buttoned up, dude. He will. He has been watching way too much. Well, that's the thing is, I love the idea of like before a fight, we take our shirts off. Imagine if you were at a bar and like two idiots push each other and then they turn around, take their shirts off, stretch a little bit, then go back at it. <laughs> you, you've never seen somebody take their shirt off and come at me, bro, like they wanted to fight? You've never seen somebody take their shirt off for a fight? Well, I guess, but I mean like formally, like almost oh. looks like a ceremony where they like <laughs> no. stop for a second and take their yeah. shirt off, not like rip it off, like come on, go at me, bro. I've only seen drunk idiots do it and you're like, no, we're not. And they're like... <laughs> <laughs> Not towards me. I've never, I've never been in a right. fight, but I've seen, I've been at a, at a party where some dude ripped his shirt off and was like, "Come and fight me!" And everybody was like, "Nobody's fighting you, dude. You're an idiot who just took his shirt off at a party. Nobody wants to fight you. <laughs> like, go home, <laughs> go home." One thing I do have a do question. You have a lot of chest hair. Oh yeah, dude. I got, I got some of that. Let that, me see. Oh yeah, I got some of that meat. For yeah, days. I think I have the same amount. It's just mine's white and yours is young person. Yeah, but I could like that's the, that's enough to rip, right? Like. Because I oh, can grab a bunch here. And I I, can rip I wear I like I like my V necks and I like tank tops and my baby has grabbed has has pulled a Bruce Lee on me. Oh yeah, grabbed a handful of chest hair <laughs> and you're like ah, <laughs> ah. She's like a snake man I, coiled like a snake. I never wear a shirt at home. I usually don't wear a shirt at home. Yeah. And with the baby, I would scream and I mean, I'd be like, put a shirt on. And I was like, ugh, I'm gonna change my life more for this little creature. So I, I like MMA. I do like watching uh, the UFC and. One of the things that always comes up is like, you know, Kung Fu does not play in the UFC. Like the Kung Fu guys who have tried to mix martial arts get their asses beat. So mm. I think Bruce Lee, I, and I, I don't know anything about Jeet Kune Do. So, mm-hmm. you know, somebody needs to tell me, like, how would something like that do? Because it does seem like it, it was like, let's take 
these ideas of Kung Fu and put them into something that actually works, that I can actually use, that is actually a defense and not just flashy movements. I, I mm. want to know if it, if it actually is a good martial art or if it's something that is, you know, like, a, like, like some Kung Fu schools. And I, I'm trying to be careful because I don't want somebody to be like, you insulted my Kung Fu. And then they show up with the nunchucks and rip my chest hair out. Like, I that would be, be cool. Yeah. Like, if they come to I'm not house. trying to start like some sort of inter-school uh, discipline fight. I, I think I just, he is. Guys, go kick his ass. <laughs> I just, you know he's got chest hair. Rip it right out. Rip it right he out. He wears V-necks. Yeah. Let's, let's wait to see if how many kittens we can get to watch. Um, <laughs> but I, I would like to know from somebody who knows martial arts if if Jeet, Jeet Kune Do is is like actually a good fighting style. Like, does it right? If it, you could use it, if it's a practical fighting style, yeah. I mean, I guess that was the philosophy of it, and I guess based on that, I don't know if your Jeet Kune Do would be different than my Jeet Kune Do, right? Because it comes to what like, works for you might be different than me. Of all the kung fu movies I've watched, it all comes down to who teaches you and you can really insult somebody's like master. So, we got to be careful. <laughs> How long is their well, that mustache? Was the whole thing in the in the <laughs> in the fight scene with Chuck Norris, that was a whole thing and he's getting his ass kicked at the beginning and then you see he start he literally physically starts to loosen up and break his style and that's what helps him beat Chuck Norris. And it's funny, we keep saying it, but I don't think we've explained it. In this scene, it takes place in the in the Colosseum in Rome. There yeah. are a bunch of feral cats, like stray cats, just running around through the scene. And there's yeah. one cat in particular that's like watching, and they keep cutting to him. And they even do like the smash zoom that like, you know, like it's kind of like a zoom kind of trucking shot and then zips in on Bruce Lee's face. Then they did one to Chuck Norris's face, and then they did one to the kitten. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hilarious. But it was one of those things that you're like, wait, why would you, like, tonally, why would you do that? It was awesome. I was on board, but it was a weird thing to do. It's funny. It's really funny. Uh, I mean, it, it, legendary, man. Dude's a legend. Gone too soon. Did you ever see that movie where uh, Chuck Norris is tied to an uh, uh, aircraft carrier? And he looks over the side of it, and then Bruce Lee shoots up out of the water and jumps in the aircraft carrier. They both stand up on the aircraft carrier, and they're punching each other. Wh which one is this? I know you weren't listening. <laughs> if you guys watch the YouTube, watch his face when I'm explaining that. I said, did you ever see the movie where Chuck Norris is tied to an aircraft carrier, and he looks over the edge into the water, and then Bruce Lee shoots up out of the water, and then they're both standing <laughs> on the aircraft carrier, and they're punching each other? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to take you with me. <laughs> uh, no, I just found this thing. Is Jeet Kune Do effective? Bruce Lee developed Jeet Kune Do for street fighting, but many of the techniques have proven highly effective in MMA. The first is a technique that took a long time to catch on, but once it did, it proved highly effective. Kicks to the leg. He's very... In this movie, there's a ton of kicks to the leg, and that's how he fucks Chuck Norris up. Chuck Norris can't stand anymore. Uh, man, last night, we saw Conor McGregor lose to Dustin Poirier, and it started with some severe kicks to his leg. And today, Conor McGregor's like, dude, my legs are fucked. I would just block him. I would just block him. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to block a leg kick to the leg. Duh. What do you block a kick to the leg with? Your leg? Baseball bat. <laughs> Baseball bat. Uh, I don't think that's what MMA is, Rumi. <laughs> that's a, I'd call it mad martial arts fighting. <laughs> dude, yeah. Uh, we could get into that, too. Well, guys, let us know what you've been watching. What's your favorite Bruce Lee movie? Not that many of them, so it's always a good pool to pull from. What uh, Have you checked out his house? What'd you think? Was it awesome? Is it, did you like it as much as I did? Did you ever shit your pants on the job? <laughs> 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 Just kidding. Oh don't, don't tell me about that one, but tell us about other stuff. <laughs> Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at LaunchpadPod, and our website, LaunchpadPod.com, and YouTube. Check us out. This this will be on YouTube. You can watch our lovely faces. <laughs> See my reaction <laughs> to the Godzilla vs. Kong trailer. Dude, I am so pumped for this movie. Cannot wait for it to come out. Uh, we, we will definitely do some some cool stuff about Godzilla when that when that happens. Godzilla and King Kong. <sighs> Until then, Rumi, you want to blast this thing off? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Whoopsh. Whoopsh. <laughs> oh, I think I think that was a shark. <laughs> <laughs> it was your internal fear. Keep it a classy. Your internal fear was yeah, externalized <laughs> into yeah, horror. It, it, manifested, it manifested into an actual monster. <laughs> oh, God. Keep it a classy here at the lunch, man. I promise we'll get our shit together. <laughs> <laughs> uh.
Oh, we've been the Rocketeers, and we are out. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. We're certainly, we're certainly giving it to him this year. I mean, as long as we're cracking up, somebody else is too.